I can't remember if I filmed an intro, so here we go. What's up guys? Matt with Motorworks here. This is my 2005 new to me Yamaha R1. It needs a 48 point checklist done to it. It's the same checklist that we do over at the uh, Haldeman Auto Cycle Hunters Garage. And um, yeah, we're going to get started on this thing here. Uh, it's been a little bit of a while since this thing has been serviced. So let's get into it. See what looks good and see what needs fixed. All right, to access the air filter, we do have to remove the seat. And to do that, there's just two bolts in the back section of the seat. You just lift up the back of the seat and that'll expose the, uh, should be a five millimeter Allen head bolt. There's one on either side. Just take those out, pick the seat up in the back and slide it out. Once you have the seat off, then you need to take this cover off here. It's just secured by a screw. And then we'll go over to the other side. All right, if we look over here, I have removed that cover there. Behind that cover gives you access to this bolt. It's the same on the other side. This bolt here needs to be removed so that you can lift the gas tank up. And then the last bolt is the one right up front here on the tank. Remove that one. So those three bolts are what secure the tank onto the bike, onto the frame, I should say. And then you just want to be careful after you remove the one screw back here for this side panel, you've got spots that clip in. You don't want to just pull this straight off. You want to slide it back and out. You've got a clip up front here. And then you've got, like I said, this clip here that hooks around this little tab there. So I'll show putting it on. Hopefully I can do it one handed. Most of the time this stuff's all busted because somebody was in a hurry doing it or probably using one hand to record a video. So that's on. Like I said, you just remove that screw back there and then you just take this panel and you're gonna wanna slide it backwards first and then just kind of gently coax it out of there. Just like that. But more than likely yours will probably be broken and as soon as you take the screw out, this panel will fall off. It's typically what I find. Again, unicorn bike. Love it. All right, there's two ways that you can prop the gas tank up. Uh, the way that they want you to do it is they want you to put just a prop rod inside this uh, steering stem here. There's a Typically there's a hole in there, but this ram mounts in the way. So we can't use that method. You basically put a prop rod from there up to the uh, gas tank and then that rod will keep it up. What I did is I just wedged a two by four between the subframe back here and the gas tank. That's going to prevent the gas tank from getting scratched on something metal. You know, you want to use something that's soft, doesn't damage the paint. But you also want to make sure that you're not pinching any fuel lines or uh, pinching any wiring stuff. So this is pretty good. This is the back half of the gas tank, so it's perfectly fine there. Uh, to take the air box off, I'm just going to remove the screws that secure it down. You'll see them all the way around the perimeter. The one you won't see is under this plug here. So you're just going to have to take that plug out. It'll just pull out of there. Probably won't do it on camera. But yeah, that plug will pull out just like that. And then down in there is a hidden Phillips head screw. And then... Just want to unplug your intake air temperature sensor. You don't necessarily have to do this because you should be able to just lift this box up enough that you can sneak the air filter out of there. But if you want to take the whole thing off and you know give the inside of the air box a good cleaning, you can do that. All right, we're about to pull the air box off of the bike. And I've got to say, one thing that tells you the 
previous owner was good at maintaining their bike or they took it to a reputable shop is this right here. I have all the original plugs, uh, the special stuff that goes around connectors, all the screws are the actual machine screws that are supposed to be in there. You don't know how many times I've taken air box or accessed air filters and there's sheet metal screws, wood screws, wrong screws, too long, not long enough. It's a nightmare sometimes working on these. So this thing has actually been a breeze. Now the only thing I'm worried about when I take this apart is actually going to be like a mouse nest. Now I did start this bike and ran it for a while so I'm hoping that's not the case and I think it was stored relatively in a, in a relatively nice place but we shall see. Moment of truth. Air box lid comes off. So far everything's looking good, but the mouse nest would not be on this side. That would be extremely bad. So this does have a genuine Yamaha racing team filter. Basically a fancy way of saying a K&N, which this one here, it's dirty. I'll, I'll clean it up, put some fresh oil on it, and then we'll have a nice freshly serviced filter, but it's a... GYT-R, Genuine Yamaha Team Racing, or whatever, whatever the heck it's called. I think it's written on the exhaust. Genuine Yamaha Technology Racing. So, I'm going to clean this, and then we'll pop that back in there, and everything in the airbox looks nice and clean, nice and neat and organized in there. Nothing crazy. So, that looks good. All the bolts were where they were supposed to be, which is fantastic. Uh, I think while I'm waiting for this to uh, dry off, I'm going to bleed the front and back brakes. Alright, so the biggest problem with these, these are uh, the first years for radial brakes. And I don't actually know what radial brake means. But any bike that has radial brakes has this master cylinder. And this master cylinder has a bleeder on it. Now, on a lot of the Japanese bikes, the bleeder is exposed. On a lot of the Italian bikes, I found that the bleeder is actually sometimes inside the master cylinder cap, like where the fluid's located. And this is typically the reason why you lose brake pressure an air bubble gets trapped somewhere in here and you just lose all your brake pressure now this bike's been sitting like I had said previous so I'm going to drain all the brake fluid out of the master cylinder cup and then we're going to air bleed up here and then we're also going to fluid flush down at the bottom we're going to get nice fresh brake fluid in there and then that should take care of the uh, spongy brake issue. All right, well, I was hoping to have a clear hose, but that's not the case. Now, before you try and loosen this with a wrench, either an open end or a 12-point wrench, this is typically what you're going to have in a toolbox. You want to find something with six points. You know, you want uh, just a six-point socket on there just to crack that breeder bleeder loose. And the reason for that is I've had some of these be extremely tight and if you try and go in there with just a wrench or the 12 point socket part of the wrench or the open end side, a lot of times it can round these off. So I always go in with at least the same amount of points that the uh, bolt has on it. If it's a 12 point, 12 point bolt then go for it. But now that it's loose I'm just going to put this piece of, this is just a piece of vacuum line. And then I have a cup. This is just a ratio right cup. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to be something to catch the brake fluid because you don't want to get this stuff on the bike because it will destroy your paint in no time. 
It's like the only piece of vacuum tubing I could find. It's going to have to work. Alright. So it's over the bleeder. I got the other end kind of towards the kind of towards my ratio right here. We're not going to be bleeding a tremendous amount out of here, so it's not a big deal. Now this has adjustable levers on it. I like to adjust them all the way till their to their maximum travel. That way you bleed out as much air as possible. And then all you're going to do is just squeeze in the lever, crack the bleeder, and then just like that, I have brake pressure again. So all that happens on these is they just get a little air bubble trapped in here. And if you do that, now the brakes are good. I can use the brakes now, but I'm going to put fresh fluid in there because I'm going to be flying down a racetrack and I want to make sure that the bike's going to stop at the end. So that's all I'm going to do. And I'm just going to repeat that process just like that there. There's there's bleeders on the both calipers. So on this side and the other side. And I'm first going to start by cracking it loose with my six point socket. And then we're just going to flush the fluid through the system. And then that'll take care of the front brakes. So we'll have some nice fresh fluid in there and peace of mind. Alrighty, so we got the front brakes are done. Nice clear fluid in there. Nice solid brake lever. I don't want to squeeze that to make that wiggle too much. But brake lever is nice and solid. I might actually want to turn that down now. Couldn't do that before. Had to have it the whole way up just for it to work. So front brakes are good. Back brakes, I bled them out. So now I got a nice high hard pedal. Back brakes are all done. And look at this nasty brake fluid that was in there. You see what's in there now? Nice crystal clear. That stuff's disgusting. And this, by the records, was changed maybe two years ago. And then it sat for all that time. Now the thing about brake fluid is it's a hydroscopic fluid, meaning it attracts moisture. And it starts to turn funky colors as it does so. Now I don't know what color this brake fluid was before. Stuff I put in is usually pretty clear. I know some brake fluids are tinted, so that might not be a great example of not letting it sit. But you definitely don't want to let it sit because it gets water in there and the brakes become less effective. Just as you saw there, I had very little brake pressure at the front and rear brakes. So those are done. I just have to clean the diaphragms. Brake diaphragms, these are what keep the fluid inside the master or the master cylinder cups and off of your paint. And the only thing I do to clean these is just get some warm soapy water, clean those off, wash my hands at the same time, and then I'll just air dry those. And once they're dry, I'll screw them back on and the brakes will be done. Alright, back at it. Uh, next night here, it was getting a little late last night, so I called it. And we're getting started on this. I actually started to fill out the paperwork. So again, 48 point checklist, like I said before. We went with the 1550 AMS oil, three quarts, oil filter. We've already checked, uh, well I've already checked, to made sure that the uh, coolant level is full and the fan actually cycles on and off. Uh, the fluids, obviously we changed those. I just wrote down my tire pressures, what they're supposed to be. I still need to get a uh, tread depth reading. I'm also going to write down the uh, the born on date that the tire is in there as well. Uh, the filter is serviced. It's installed. Ready to rock and roll. So visually the fork seals are good they're not leaking I didn't see any uh, major cracking in the uh, dust seals the all the lights are working now I didn't fill out the turn signal stuff I think I am going to probably change the turn signals on the front and back I'd like to put the OEM stuff on there 
the previous owner again kept everything and he was nice enough to keep the plug but not nice enough and they cut it flush with the plug so I'm gonna have to figure out what to do there hopefully I can get just those uh, wire ends and then make some new connectors to go into this plug but typically when you cut the wires off here you should at least leave you know maybe three inches of wire just something that if you ever plan on going back to stock it makes it easy to do so but they did not throw away these connectors so it's it's not all bad so the cool thing with this when i got the bike it came with stands both the front stand and a back stand uh, and on the stand here i'm going to be checking the rear wheel bearings and i'm also going to be servicing the chain i have a video already on cleaning the chain so i'm not going to bore you with that we'll just show you the end result but i am going to show you uh, wheel bearings we're going to check those typically to check wheel bearings i usually just grab the wheel wiggle it side to side spin the wheel make sure the wheel spins freely typically when i spin it i'll put my hand kind of on like a solid part of the bike and you can actually feel when wheel bearings are starting to go bad they'll actually start uh, causing a slight vibration on hard parts so you know you spin the wheel and you kind of put your hand here while you're spinning the wheel and usually you can feel some type of resistance or vibration through you know those bearings being bad because what happens is they get dry pitted rusty whatever the case may be and they start to actually it's almost like a, a low growl like you'll feel a low like growl in the bearing it's hard to describe but um, there is another way to do it and I'm gonna show you how to do that now oh one other thing before we do that I had the battery on charge all night now this is a new battery but before you start riding a bike or you know before you do any type of testing on a charging system which we will do you want to make sure that you're starting with a nice freshly charged battery so this has been charging all night and it's green now so should be at its optimal battery level all right now the spin and feel for roughness technique works great but on these Yamahas, the reason I like to take the wheels off, at least on higher mileage bikes, this I don't consider super high mileage, but you know, 20,000 miles is getting up there. And the Yamaha, a lot of the Yamaha sport bikes have a, just an open bearing on the one side here with a sleeve that goes in here. So you just want to make sure that that's not dry and that spins nice and freely which this one does the other thing I, I like to do with these is actually put some high temp grease in there just put some fresh grease in there that way that's getting nice and lubricated and doesn't run the risk of seizing but there's a bearing there there is a sealed bearing on the brake side Let's see if I can get some light on that yeah, it should be good enough you just want to come in here and kind of move the bearing around and you'll feel gritty bearings just by spinning them you know if they're not smooth at all then it's time to get new bearings and if you're unsure you know you can always take this into a shop and just tell them to check your bearings make sure that they're all still in good working order if you're in Pennsylvania, they should be doing this anyway as part of an inspection. But uh, just, you know, if you're not from Pennsylvania, you don't have an annual inspection, you know, just you can always go to a shop and say, hey, just make sure my bearings are still in good shape. Because the last thing you want is a bearing to seize up on you, especially a front wheel bearing. Back wheel bearing, you could probably manage, but a front one would be extremely difficult. So I'm going to put some grease in here and then we're going to put this thing back together clean up our chain and then pretty much button up everything back here and uh, finish up everything on the front of the bike so this is the chain not clean this is just a lube chain 
that the lube's been on here for a while, the bike hasn't been ridden, and that's how the wheel spins right now. So, I've actually never done this before, but I do know that you definitely will free up some of that rolling resistance. We'll just see how much. So if I spin it, then it kind of spins. So we'll see if it's any different after I clean the chain and, and get some fresh lube on there. Clean lube chain, it's adjusted. So we'll see if it spins any different. Yeah, not really. Maybe a little bit freer. But it is cleaner, it looks nicer. So I'm saying it made a difference. All right, now to finish up back here, I'm just gonna check the tire pressure. Take a look at the nice shiny chain. And also while we're back here, I am so glad that the uh, sticker has been left in place. You don't know how many times I've worked on a bike and for some reason people take this decal off and then I'm left searching for the tire specs or tire pressure specs. So since we're not doing any type of racing right now, we're just gonna set it to what they recommend, which is 36 PSI in the front and 42 in the rear. And while we're back here, we're also gonna look at the birth date on the tire, of the tire, on the tire. And that is going to be a four digit number written right after the DOT number. So the first thing we have to do is locate the DOT number, which is right here. So this is the DOT number here. And then all the way at the end of the DOT number, there's a four digit number. And this number is 3015, which means this was made the 30th week of 2015, making this tire seven years old. Now they recommend for a sport bike that you don't run these any longer than seven years. I've seen videos that contradict that. This tire's almost shot anyway as far as tread depth is concerned. So I'm just going to take this and, and run with it. So I mean, I've run older tires and, and I've not had too many issues with it. I don't recommend it for a newer rider because these can be a little bit slicker just be forewarned, I don't recommend doing this, but I've done this enough and I am gentle enough on tires that I don't think this is gonna be a problem for me. And really it's only because this bike's been sitting, because these tires are old, you know, there's, they're gonna be a little slick at first. You gotta kind of work them in real slow, heat them up, bring them up to temperature slowly. And then, you know, once they're up to temp, they get pliable and they're much better. But it's definitely not a tire that you get out there early in the morning on a cold day and try and go as fast as you can through a corner or try and accelerate really hard pulling out from a stop. You will end up on your butt and watching your bike slide down the road. So just gonna put air in a tire back here and then we are going to start the bike, check the charging system, button everything up back here pull the bike off the lift and then as a final check we're going to check the wheel bearings and we're going to check the steering head bearings and then this sh service should be done so a charging system should have at a minimum it should at least have more voltage than it does with the battery just sitting here it should be producing more volts than with it just sitting here. So we're sitting right about 12.9 volts because we just pulled it off the charger earlier. So about 12.9. Let's start it up, see what we got. So 14 volts, that's looking good. 
I turned the high beams on, made sure that it didn't affect it too badly. It only dropped to about a little bit under 14, and then it looked like it picked itself back up. So the voltage regulator is doing what it's supposed to, and the battery is being charged really well, actually. So I'm going to put the seat on. All right, so I have it off the lift, on the ground. I just put the uh, jack under the exhaust, and it's on the side stand. I just have it jacked up off the ground enough so that I can turn the wheel from left to right, right to left, without any, you know, without it dragging on the ground or anything. So I'm just going to feel, again, like I did on the back wheel, spin the wheel. I want to make sure it spins freely. That's the other thing I forgot to mention back there. You also want to make sure that it spins freely and the brakes aren't dragging, because that could be the sign of the calipers needing rebuilt or possibly the master cylinder needing rebuilt. So spins freely. I put my hand here on the fork leg. Again, I'm feeling for any type of low grumbling or gritty feeling, but everything feels smooth. I don't feel anything at all in this lower fork leg as that's spinning around. The brakes are making noise. That's okay. The brake pads do slightly rest onto the brake rotor, so I'm not concerned with that at all. And the brakes feel good. So you can also wiggle side to side, you know, make sure that they're not loose and they feel good there. Now steering bearings are going to be along the same lines as the wheel bearings. I'm just going to make sure that it makes a nice smooth sweep from side to side. Now this does have a steering stabilizer on it, so I'm not too worried about the resistance at this point because it is adding a little bit of resistance as I'm turning it but it is a nice smooth transition from right to left. Now where you might notice the biggest hiccup or, or um, uh, the biggest spot of contention would be right in the center here where that front wheel is right in the center line of the bike. Uh, a lot of times it gets pitted from you know straight line riding, constantly hitting bumps. You know there's just bearings in there, and those bearings can start to put indentations in the uh, bearing races. But this feels good. I'm also going to come down here. I'm going to grab these lower fork legs, and I'm just going to gently move them back and forth. Not so much that I rock it off the side stand, but enough that I can get a good feel to see if anything's loose. And everything feels tight there. I'm not going to get much more aggressive than that, but front end feels good. Everything feels secure on there, and the bearings still feel like they're in good working order. So front end of the bike is good. So now it's just the test ride, and I am going to ride this thing to work. So I'm going to put a good test ride on it. Oh, one other thing, the gas. Now the gas in this tank is old. And I have probably about 60 or so miles that I'm going to ride uh, in the next day. And I'm also going to ride this thing to the drag strip when I take it there. So I'm going to run as much gas out of this tank as possible. I don't tell people to drain the tank. If it starts and it runs, it's fine. I mean, you'll be all right. It's not like you're putting anything in jeopardy. Just don't go out and abuse it with the fuel that's in there. Uh, but it'll be perfectly fine to get me to and from work, to get me to at least a gas station close to the racetrack where I can put some fresh fuel in it at that point and then I'll be perfectly fine with that. So, service is done. I just gotta finish filling out the paperwork and then I'm gonna go take this thing for a ride. But uh, let's close this video out. Alrighty, so we got our list going through. I still need to inspect the bike. I'll still need to put the uh, stock turn signals, everything on it before I get it inspected. The oil again has been changed. I got all the, pretty much everything on this list here with the addition of the tires. The tires are still passable. They'll still pass an inspection, but the dates are a little worrying. Both the tires were from 2015. So I definitely want to get a fresh set of tires at some point. Uh, the valve stems are both metal 90 degree valve stems and those uh, were in great shape. No leaks coming from there. Uh, turn signals I still have to 
fix those, but that's not going to affect anything for a test ride. Uh, the battery tender was already installed on the bike. It was green on the charger. It's a new battery, so I didn't actually test the battery because this battery was just purchased, I believe, June of this year. So it's only a couple months old, and it's been on a tender since it's been installed. So I'm not too concerned that the battery is not going to be a good one. Battery is charging at about 14.3 volts. There is gas in the tank. It's old. I did throw some stabilizer in there. I put the marine grade stable in there. Uh, just they say it helps as a fuel additive to help keep the fuel system clean. It also helps with water and fuel separation. It kind of prevents that, but usually you do that before you're about to ride it. Not after it's been sitting for a while, but hey, any little bit helps, I guess. It does start sound, does start and run, sounds good and healthy. Uh, bearings were good. I just mo noted that we uh, greased the rear and the steering head bearings still feel okay. I don't know about clutch, I don't know about shifting, and I don't know about handling or anything like that because I haven't test driven it yet. But everything else checks out on the bike. It's over there, ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm gonna end this video off here, guys. If you liked the video, as always, give it a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what I'm doing good. Let me know where I can improve. If there's some things you wanna see on this bike that I didn't go over in detail, let me know. Uh, it does have 20,000 miles on it. I might consider doing a valve inspection. So if that's something you guys wanna see, certainly leave a comment below. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I want to do it. I got to look through the records, see if it was done ever, and uh, you know, go from there. But if it is something you want to see, I don't mind taking this apart and doing a valve inspection. It's not that big of a job, to me at least. And if it helps you out, great. But I was going to just cut right to the track after this video in the next upload, but at the last minute, I got a little special surprise coming for this bike. So you'll have to wait to see what that is. But we'll see you in that video, guys. Thanks for checking this one out. I'm Matt. This is MotorWorks.